Ibojou, Indigenous Cause, Pichi Menomini, Wabish Gazimi Guan Kwe, Ayandai Wenjiba, Wasasim First Nation, Takaranto, Turtle Island, um, Indigenous Ba. Um, so, what I was telling you was that my name is Robin Rice, Pichi Menomini. My spirit name is Wabish Gazimi Guan Kwe. Um, and I come from Wisoskin First Nations, which is Perry Island, Perry Sound. Um, that's where all my family's from. Um, I am like, we did originate not from Perry Sound, but from um, North America, like Turtle Island, but in the States. So we traveled to Perry Sound before colonization started. Um, well, around the same time, and when we reached to our destination, that's when the settlers wanted to scoop up our piece of land on that side, so in Perry Sound. And the reason why they did that was because our lands were filled with fishes, um, fisheries, and um, minerals. So that's what my reserve, my community is about on Wisoskin. Um, so I do come from Wisoskin First Nations, but I was born and raised in Toronto, Ontario. I'm a single mother to a 15 year old daughter. Um, and also I was a student who graduated the transitional year program at University of Toronto and I'm a big, I'm a big um, person, not a big person, but I'm a, I have a lot of leadership skills and I do a lot of community work in the Indigenous community of Toronto. Um, and also I come from the Otter Clan, which I've explained lots and lots of times. Otter Clans um, are little otters that are beautiful and they're playful, they're educational, they're, their clan purposes are to educate the community and to educate those who don't know about our culture in general. Um, and yeah, so I'm really upset because I haven't really seen my hair um, like this. Usually in my jingle dress, I have long braids. Um, they're actually wrapped around in otters. So maybe next time, next week, I'll show um, what I do with my hair and show hair teachings that go along with this jingle dress. So I cut my hair because I've been going through a lot of stuff and as indigenous people, we do cut our hair, um, not very like short or whatever. Like I literally cut two inches, it's down to there, but I wasn't able to braid it out today just because I'm super busy. Um, so what I'm wearing today is actually called a jingle dress. Um, and I'm actually gonna smudge first before I talk any more about the jingle dress. And I usually do smudge every time I start off a space, most of the time I smudge. And the reason why I smudge is because when I start off in a space, I want it to be a good space, um, a happy space, something that people aren't nervous of or I'm not nervous of, um, almost like a healthy space for us, a courageous space for us to come through and learn these teachings of Indigenous knowledge and Indigenous history that we don't normally get on a regular. I always find that it's best to get those teachings. Like I know in schools, I feel like they need to get more teachers that are indigenous to continue carrying on that knowledge for ourselves, you know, and not for ourselves, but where the knowledge comes from the people themselves, right? But it's okay if we still teach and then everybody passes on those messages. So I do my eyes to clear out any negativity. I usually wash my eyes so that I could see beautiful things. I wash my ears so that I could hear beautiful things. I wash my mind so that it could be cleared with beautiful thoughts and that I could hear everything that's going on in a kind way. I rub my heart so that I clean my heart and that I use my heart and this conversation full of love. As I stand up, you'll see my jingles, and then I'll give you the teaching of the jingles that way. I can't sit because they're all around. So these jingles, 
these jingles, there's about 200 jingles on here. And these jingles that are on here are healing purposes. And the healing purposes for these jingles are were created back in 1918 to 1920, the year 1918 and the year 1920. And that's when we had um, a disease that was going around called the Spanish flu. And the Spanish flu is pretty much when this jingle dress, which a jingle dress is a dance of, it's a healing dress. It heals the community. It heals our people um, who aren't able to dance, who aren't able to walk. We heal the people that are sick. We heal the people that aren't healthy, that have um, not healthy, but like any type of sicknesses, diseases, anything to pray into these jingles so that we could actually, um, <clears throat> so we could actually pray for our people. Um, because when we are gifted this type of jingle dress, this jingle dress in general, it's gifted through our mentors and it's gifted through creator spirit. And even our family could gift us these gifts. You know, our spirit, Wabish Gizimi Guanfe, means white feathered woman. So white feathered woman carries a lot of gifts in that name itself. And one of those gifts is carrying the gift of a bundle. So we have a bundle and in our bundle, lies something like our jingle dress, our medallions, our earrings. We have feathers, which I've showed before and I could show again. I just don't know where they are. I should have had them in front of me, but sometimes when I do these speeches, I don't have them prepared. It's usually whatever I think about and whatever comes out naturally, that's what I want to explain to everybody. So I'm kind of, oh, so this dress came out in 19, in, when the Spanish flu came out. And when this dress came out, it actually came out with, um, because a girl named Maggie White was sick. She was ill and she was from Whitefish Bay. So when she was ill, her grandfather um, had a dream and the dream was about a beautiful jingle dress. So it had, it was like this. And then that's where it comes to all these beautiful jingles here. And all of these jingles actually carry prayers into them. So when you see these in person, I'll like, don't ever go to an indigenous person with their regalia on and start touching their stuff. We have to ask permission, just like we have to ask permission for we have to ask consent for things, right? So it's respectful to ask consent. And a lot of us don't really take pictures. Like today I wanted to record it because I, I would have done this again for everybody, you know what I mean? And I probably will, will in person, but this one I just wanted to do it um, so that people who did miss able to um, see this. So we don't really record stuff like this, even though we have been nowadays because everything's done through social media now and COVID, we had no other choice to dance other than being online. Um, so now we're taking it forward and, and doing it publicly, but depending on the person, some people are more traditional than others. And what I mean by traditional is they take in the more traditional protocols, like they don't want any of our stuff filmed, not even smudging, you know? So that's the old traditional ways. And those are from way back in the day, right? And they didn't have um, screen time or anything like this. So a lot of times, the, the, the times are changing. And in the jingle dress, there, um, in that dream, there was a message. And the message was instructions for the dance for this grandfather to make this jingle dress, to have the jingle dress dancers dance a certain way um, because each um, dance that, each, each indigenous First Nations people's dance, um, indigenous people's dance has a different meaning to each of them. This one's just the jingle dress version. Um, they do have a fancy shawl, 
they do have um, grass dancers, they do have traditional, um, but right now I don't dance traditional, I dance jingle dress and I dance fancy shawl. So there's gonna be another episode of a fancy shawl one um, in the future though. So back to the story, Maggie, White, um, Maggie White's grandfather had this dream with the instructions. And when he woke up, he created this dress um, with these cones. These are called cones. And these cones are actually made from tobacco can tops. And these tobacco tan can tops, um, you could see like the sound that it makes. They roll them up. And each of these cones are actually prayed into. So when we touch our jingle dress dances, we're not allowed to consume any negative things into our body. We have to have a clean, a clean, um, I want to put it in a way where we have to, we have to just be really positive and put that positive in energy into these dresses because we're the ones praying for our people with these dresses and they're very, very powerful, um, which means they're just very, very healing. So one thing that I do when I dance and this is, oh, let me finish that story. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry, everybody. <laughs> um, so when he got this instruction, he was given this instruction for the women to dance into this jingle dress. When he danced, when they danced into the jingle dress, um, it was said that Maggie White was getting better. And so that's why they called this dance a healing dance, because it did help heal the sick. And there's a lot of reasons why, like it sounds like thunder when you dance and not only does it sound like thunder, um, again, these, these cones are very powerful. So when I do dance, I'm given tobacco from anybody, um, either somebody who has cancer in their family, somebody who is sick themselves, um, somebody who, has a community that's struggling with any kind of um, addictions or any type of mental health that we have, or, you know, they put their good thoughts into this tobacco and they gift this tobacco to me in my left hand closest to my heart. And the reason why they gift it to me is so that I could use this tobacco to dance and pray. So I'll pray with this the whole time I dance, and then after I'm done dancing, I'll let go of the tobacco either in a fire because the smoke will let the let the um, smoke go up to creator. If not, I also put it in the fire. And when I put it in the fire, that's when I'm able to um, that's when I'm able to get it get it going. I guess that's when the prayers go to creator and. So that's that's pretty much what we do with the jingle dress dancing. Um, I've been jingle dress dancing for about three to four three years now, and I'm um, going on four years actually. Um, and I started at the I started when I was a little girl, but I left the community at the age of fifteen years old. Um, I was in a lot of group homes and foster care, and because of that, I got lost like I wasn't able to practice my culture no more and because I wasn't able to practice my culture no more means that I wasn't able to dance and I actually was a fancy shawl dancer which I'll show you the shawl right now so this is a shawl um you could see that if you look at it it reminds it should remind people of a butterfly. And what it does is it goes over your shoulders and you move around like a butterfly and it goes all over the place. So I have not used that shawl as of yet to dance in it. So I'll be glad to do the first dance in front of everybody at the 519 and all the youth. My first dance uh, I'm going to do right now is actually 
called a sidestep. So in these instructions that were given to Maggie White's grandfather, it was said that there was rules to follow when you dance. So when you dance, <clears throat> your feet don't jump off of the floor. Like <coughs> they don't um, like go up high. So fancy shawl dancing, they actually move their feet up really high. But with jingle dress, you have to keep your feet like that. And so as so I'm gonna play little otter side step. Twas the night before Christmas. Can you hear those bells? Can you hear the bells in the background? Yep. reason hold on <laughs> I couldn't hear Okay, so for some odd reason, my um, the little otter song keeps on playing and then restarting back at the beginning, and I have no idea because it's never done that on my screen before. But did everybody get to see how the sidestep looks like? Was the screen like close enough for that? Yeah. Okay. So that is a sidestep. And we go, so the reason why we um, go like this, because we're, we're going closer to the ground. And when we go closer to the ground, it's, in it's imitating um, when we used to hold the baskets and go berry picking or medicine picking. And so we used to be close down to the ground, picking, picking the medicine. And then our feet don't touch the ground, our feet don't jump off the ground. So that's what, and then the deep that go down. So in that song also, we have an honor beat. And that's usually when I have the tobacco in my left hand. I'll hold my kokum scarf in my left hand with my tobacco. And I'll also have this foxtail that was given to me at Nathan Phillips Square when we were dancing at the, um, the, for the residential school survivors in on September, like before September 30th. So this was given to me because I dealt with something. And one thing in the indigenous community is people always gift you sacred items. Remember when I said that we have a bundle? 
well, this is part of my bundle. This is part of my bundle, which is also my sacred items too. So I carry these with me. And when the honor beat comes on, you put them up like this and you just continue dancing. And so it's pretty awesome. Um, I wish that I was able to actually do a whole song for you. I'm so, what, what I'm gonna do with this tobacco is I'm gonna put it outside by the tree. Um, I'm actually gonna pray in it a little bit longer because I feel like my dance wasn't long enough because of the fact that the little otter song just kept on like replaying back. It was really weird, um, which is okay. So that's pretty much it for today's, <sighs> story you're welcome how, how heavy is your dress um it's actually really heavy um because there's 200 cones on here I think there might even be 225 cones it gets really heavy and I start sweating like I'm sweating right now and I didn't even dance like that like long you know I just kept on repeating that same intro part so that gave me a sweat right there um but it keeps you very active because you're always on your toes. You're bouncing up and down with your legs and on your tippy toes. Um, but I also, so it is heavy because these get heavy too, the beaded medallions. These are all hand beaded by indigenous designers. Very long process to do these. This was a matching set to these beautiful strawberry earrings. Usually I have otters in my hair, which are so long and they're actually pretty heavy as well. And those bounce with my braids and with my jingles, right? So when that's bouncing, it does get really heavy. So we have to drink a lot of water. And for those who have asthma, just have to make sure they like breathe properly or like, you know, take their do what they have to do to, to get through the, the dancing. But that's why they have also traditional because traditional dancing is slower. It's just swaying, swaying. It's more for the elders. They just sway back and with their beautiful moose um, leather. I'll also find pictures for that one too and just show everybody next week. Well, why, why are there ribbons? You have loads of ribbons. The ribbons hold the um, jingles in place. And you also know, you're ribbons. You know, your, 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 also, you're on yeah. your hands and on, on, on the necklace too. No, there's no ribbons on the necklace. The, oh, the necklace, this is just something to hold the necklace hold together. On. The ribbons are just ribbons to represent your colors represent whatever colors you feel like you want to want to hold um because this is j j um dragonflies the dragonflies represent water so my ribbons are pertaining to more for a water feel um but all ribbons don't have to have same meaning or have any meaning at all right some people may some people may vision the jingle dress before they make it. And that's their instructions to make that specific jingle dress. Um, so my ribbons, I didn't do this jingle dress myself. Um, I actually bought it. And the reason why I bought it was because I was sitting at Humber River and Humber River had a lot of dragonflies there at the time. So all of them were like, like chilling beside me. Like I was like, they were just there, you know? And, and it's a reminder of our elders as well. And our elders, um, not our elders, sorry, our ancestors, the ones in, that have passed on. So that's what a representation of a dragonfly is to me. So when I seen this jungle dress, I was like, I need this jungle dress. And I ended up getting it and then I feasted it. But the one that I'm creating, um, the one that I was supposed to do three years ago, 
um, I didn't do, I stopped doing that because my best friend, um, which is like my brother, he, he um, passed on to spirit world and it was an overdose. So it was really hard for me to deal with. But at the same time, I didn't want to put that negative energy into my dress. So I left it. And now that I'm coming back to it, like these are all my colors, luckily, but the other one is just going to be simple. It's not going to be as vibrant as, as this. It's just going to be more simple and more traditional, like how it was like when the dresses first came out. So technically when everybody gets a dress, it's their own teachings, their own visions, their own story of who they are where they come from, their clans. They may talk about their colors on there. So it is a story when you get to know um, Jingle Dress. So not all ribbons have a meaning, okay. but mine are definitely a meaning of water. And this blue is a meaning of water, right? And dragonflies are very close to water and dragonflies don't last long either. So. I have to put this jingle dress away until dragonflies come back out, I feel. And I think that's why I haven't been dancing in my jingle dress. And that's why I cut off my hair. I, I, I ha was holding a lot of stuff um, during residential school survivor, um, do, during the recovery of the babies. And because I was dancing for the community, dancing for the people, my grandmother's a survivor. And it, it, we have lots of intergenerational trauma. And because of that, is the reason why I, I cut my bangs and cut my hair. And it was kind of a way for me to say that I need a break of jingle dress dancing. But in reality, I always come back to my jingle dress because it, it's what I need to do. You know, it, it's something that is a must for me to continue doing. So no matter how much I try to put my jingle dress away, Comes it back. still calls me back. <laughs> yeah, it's like, come here. And I have it hung up in my room by my bed so it's not like locked away it's there for me to see every day as a reminder like yeah I know you're there don't worry I'll, I'll dress up but I am really sad about my hair I'm kind of almost like having insecurities but at the same time I have to remember that we do things and things will grow back you know and and we do learn from things and if we do have to let go of something we got to let it go you know and we have to let that go in general Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bama P, everybody, and Chimi Gwetch.